Praise you, Jesus. All right. We welcome you, brothers and sisters, all over the world. We welcome our brothers and sisters from around Malta. I know many of you who follow us from the States, Canada, USA, UK, um, uh, Canary Islands, Uganda, Kenya, and Nigeria, South America, South Africa. All of you who are following us here, who follow us regularly, let us know where you're following. I know from Pakistan and India as well. We greet you. Hallelujah. I want to encourage you to put on your seatbelt today because we're going to go for a ride. Amen. Hallelujah. Let us pray. Let us pray. Thank you, Jesus. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this morning, for this privilege that we can receive the word of God this morning. And we believe that your word is alive and it's active, it's living. And we thank you that the word will pierce every form of darkness in our hearts, in our lives and all around us. And we will never be the same again. Speak to us, Holy Spirit, and grant us revelation knowledge of your truth. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Go to the book of James chapter 1. Interestingly, James was actually not called James. He was called Jacob. But when they arrived in England, they gave the name of James. James chapter 1. Well, I'm going to read from verse 2. But before I read, I want to start with a, a few comments. Today, I wanted to share with you and all our international audience about controversial faith. How many of you know what does the word controversial mean? Anybody knows what the word controversial? It comes from two words. You know, a, a, a normally a mind of a teacher sees many words in syllabus, in syllables. Controversial. Right away, it already tells you something there. Contra versus. The word controversial is the word contra, which means against. And versus means to turn. Another word for controversial is to be against the current. Against the current. How many of you are controversial here? Anybody is here controversial? Oh, praise God, somebody's alive today and somebody's awake. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. What about the rest of you who did not lift up your hand? You know, it's very interesting. Today, I, as I was preparing this message, I preached this, in, this message in three languages. Maltese, Italian, and now, no. Maltese, Italian, now in English. I, was getting, I got something else today because every time you preach a message, you, you always end up getting something fresh from the Lord. Amen? But being controversial is the calling of a Christian. Now, many, many people out there, or should I say news media, which most of it is liberal. How many of you know that media, most of it is liberal? Perverse, corrupt, and a liar. Amen? If you, have, if you look at many newsstands, if you look at many platforms, social platforms, why do you think they ban certain things on Facebook, for example? On Twitter, although now Twitter, the story has changed because now Elon Musk owns Mr. Twitter. But the, why do you, why, why, for example, even many... Uh, like even on Facebook, they put many in, ha in Facebook arrest. Have you ever been arrested on Facebook? Anybody's been arrested on Facebook? I've been arrested six times. <laughs> on Facebook arrest. Anyway, so why is it? And I can tell you, because they normally want to shut up what they don't want to hear. Okay, sometimes they say it's because certain people may get offended by certain content. It's because we're living in an age where truth offends people. Hello? Are you aware that we're living in an age where truth offends people? Does the truth offend you? 
anyone hear the truth offends you? Because you're about to be trampled all over by the truth today. If the truth offends you, you're in bondage. Because the only way, way to be set free is by the truth. So you remove the truth, which the truth is also the light of God. Okay? And you put people in bondage. The word, the, the word controversial involves a stark difference of opinion. Hello. That sounds like Christianity. That sounds like Jesus. That sounds like God. How many of you know that God has a stark difference of opinion from what the prime minister thinks? God has a stark difference of opinion from what Joe Biden thinks. I like to call him Joe Biden. And if you look at him for a few seconds, you realize that this guy is gone and done. Bless his darling heart. May he have a time to repent before he goes to the lake of fire and all those around him. But that's not the only one. There are many. God is involved in stark difference of opinion against Brussels. Against White House, currently for sure. Against even, even things that even our government is, is putting into law. What about those of you who come from the UK or from other countries whom you, you unfortunately you have the law for abortion? God is in stark difference of posing of opinions to that. And if you call yourself a Christian, you better be like that too. Otherwise, you, you have never met Jesus Christ. Jesus is not for death. Jesus is for life. He is pro-life. Amen? It involves being in disagreement against the current. It involves, everybody says, it involves being in disagreement against the current. So I should be looking at a bunch of people who are controversial against the current today. Hello? Jesus was the most controversial person in history. How many of you agree with that? Once again, what is controversial? It means against the common opinion and against the current if any, I want to address right now pastors, evangelists, ministers, deacons, priests, bishops, apostles, whatever. If you are not controversial, you are in favor of the current. If you're not against the current as a Christian, as a follower of Christ, if you want to know where Jesus Christ is going in the world, you can go, you can look at where the current of the world is going and you can be sure that Jesus is going against it. Amen? It's going against common opinion, the current. What the world thinks, what Brussels thinks, what Rome thinks, what many religious denomination thinks. I've heard some abominational, abominable stuff just the other day, a couple of days ago. What... About the, the Presbyterian Church in America. Have you heard it? Have you heard what the Presbyterian Church did in America? The abomination of recognizing this, the things which are abominable to God. That's not the only huh? one. The Catholic Church in some areas is the same. Some Protestant churches in some areas are the same. Some evangelical churches are the same. Just because you, today you call yourself a Christian, because the word Christian has become just like another cliche, it means nothing. It's, just, it's saying nothing about you. Just because you say to me, I believe in God, it means nothing. Even the devil believes in God. And he reads the Bible more than you. He knows the Bible more than you. Amen? But all of these things and all of these personalities I'm mentioning 
while they may appear religious and godly, but they're actually they're against God. And they're going with the current. Jesus goes against the current. Anyone who follows Christ will go against what the world thinks. How many of you, when you became a Christian, all hell broke loose against you? Anybody lift up your hand? You started, you realized, wow, I have life. You see, if you are, if you're comfortable and if you're having a nice cruise, you know, enjoying the ride as a Christian and, you, and you're saying to yourself, well, you know, I don't feel any opposition. I don't, if you I don't feel like I'm, I'm against anything or against anyone or any, against any principles. Well, most probably it's because you've been carried away with it. Hello. Now, one of the things that I've learned through common sense, which is not that common anymore, is that no matter which current you see, current always flows downward. Did you get that? No matter what current you may be in, no matter what current you may be looking at, currents always go downward. You never see a current go upward. Have you ever seen, like whenever, the, for example, there are many rains, even in Malta. I, in Malta, they don't, need, they don't need many rains. Just a trickle of rain and we are submerged. Okay? Um, but, you know, we see countries, for example, where there are a lot of rains, ter uh, torrential rains, and you see the streets flooded and cars starting being pulled, uh, rocks, wood, houses, people... Instead of giving them hand, catch this on video. <laughs> right? How many of you seen anything like that? You see currents just get everything that's in, in front and it, and, and, uh, and it carries it down and it all ends up in a big pile of dung, of trash. If you are going with the current, you're going to end up in a big pile of trash. And if you are not against the current by calling, by purpose, you're going to be carried down a current that's going to end up in the pits of hell. Anyone who says I'm a Christian, automatically you said I'm controversial against the current. Now let me ask you a question. How many of you are a Christian? How many of you love, you believe in Jesus? Lift up your hand. All right, quite a few. Now, let me make another st a question. How many of you truly, 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 now God is watching, how many of you truly want to live for Jesus? Stand up. Stand up if you want to live for Jesus Christ. If you want to live for Jesus, let me see. Somebody are not standing up. Hallelujah. Now, don't stand up because everybody else is standing up. <laughs> Hannah, lift up your hand. The devil is watching. He just saw you saying that I want to live for Jesus. You know, you know what you've just told the, the devil and his cohorts? I am against you. I'm, I am not with the current. I'm coming against the current. Hallelujah. Shout hallelujah to Jesus. <laughs> hallelujah. Amen. Now, let me tell you something. I want to speak to the Pope, the bishops. Catholic priests, pastors, ministers, if you are not against the current, one I already said, you're being carried away with the current, and currents carry everything which is not coming against and resisting against. And second, now this is another, this is a very important point. If you're being carried with the current, it means you're dead. Have you ever looked at the salmon, the fish, the salmon? Some of you like to eat it for lunch. You're going to have lunch today. You're going to have salmon today for lunch. All right? You know, salmon is a very interesting fish, apart from it tastes nice. But actually, it goes against the current. It goes against the current. How a strong fish like that 
can go against such a mighty current that's coming against it. One day I've heard that many salmon, they, they, they swim up against the current because they have eggs that they want to lay. Some of you are carrying eggs. Divine purposes of God. Divine plans, vision, faith, and the word of God. The moment you said, I am a Christian, I didn't say I'm a religious. I said, the moment you say, I'm a Christian. Remember, the word Christian itself means like Christ. Christ-like. The moment you said, I am a Christian, all of a sudden, all hell broke loose against you. The current came against you. Or else you came, you rose up and came against the current. The moment you say, I am born again. Do you know many so-called Christians are not born again? Jesus says, unless you're born again, you cannot see the kingdom of God. John chapter 3, verse 3 through 8. They simply are religious. They just simply do a religious duty on a Sunday morning. That don't make you Christian. You see the door outside is open. If a dog comes inside today, it don't become Christian. The moment you say, I believe in the Bible. How many of you believe in the Bible? And how many of you believe the Bible? There are two different things. Some of you who believe in the Bible, when you read the Bible, you start questioning, I wonder if this is true. <laughs> and like I always like to say, many read the newspapers every day and believe everything. And then they read the Bible and they question everything. And by the way, don't buy newspapers. Because you're buying lies. You're buying lies. Let me, uh, let me tell you something very boldly and clearly. The newspapers and the channels of this nation and many channels in America like news, news, posts, new, new, news agencies and news, what do you call them, programs, even in the UK, they're controlled. They're controlled what to tell people. They're not telling you the truth. They're telling you a narrative that has already been prepared ahead of time. So you are dummy if you're paying money for lies. If you want to know the, tr know the truth, you're not going to find it from the newscast or from the news channel. They are controlled. They're forbidden from telling the way it is. Many Christians buy newspapers. Because they're dumb. I'm sorry to tell you that. Either one. Don't matter. If you want to read the truth, open your Bible. You'll be surprised what you read in it. It talks about you. Amen? Hallelujah. Don't new, I'm telling you, brothers and sisters in Malta, don't buy newspapers. Let them go broke and out of business in Jesus' name. If you want to buy reading material, apart from your Bible, read, read Christian material. Read Christian books. We have a whole library of books here. Hallelujah. Amen. The only way you can go with the current, if you go down. And the moment you're going down is because you're no longer resisting. And you have died. Your life is died, as dead. And now you're being carried away. How many of you want to be carried away? Go to the book of James 1. What I told you earlier. Verse 2. My brethren and sisters. Count it all joy when you fall into various trials. Let me hear some people rejoicing, hallelujah, celebrating, being happy. Come on, everybody. Anybody happy today? Have you been through some trials lately? Have you been through some tests lately? Hallelujah, then count it all joy. Thank you, Jesus. I'm alive. <laughs> 
If you're encountering trials, it's because you're still alive. Amen? Knowing that the testing of your faith produces patience. Knowing that the testing of your faith produces patience. I know we don't always feel like we want to be happy. Although the word happy comes from the word happening. So you don't need to wait until something happens in order for you to be happy. Because the Bible says the joy, our joy comes from what? Our joy comes from the Lord. Hallelujah. So you can act joyful because you know that you're alive. And you're alive in Christ. Amen. And now, now verse 3. Knowing that the testing of your faith produces patience. So hold on. Listen to this. When your faith is being tested, it is doing something good on your behalf. When your faith is being tested, something good is happening on your behalf. Unfortunately, today, many newspapers and other media and social media, they come against Christians and they attack us by calling us controversial. For example, if you read newspapers against about me, there are many, by the way, don't believe anything that the newspapers say. Because if you want, I've always learned, integrity teaches me that if you want to know something about Gordon, ask Gordon. If you want to know something about Elton, get to know Elton. If you want to know about Jesus, don't ask Buddha, ask Jesus about Jesus. Amen. If you want to know about Jesus, don't ask Muhammad. Ask Jesus. Hello. So if you want to know something about Gordon, don't ask the Times of Malta. Don't ask Super One or TVM. Ask Gordon. And Gordon will happily tell you. Some may not be happy with what I tell you. But I will tell you the truth. Amen. Hallelujah. That's called bottom line basic integrity. So don't believe everything that the newspapers say. Even the weather doubt. Because tomorrow is going to be sunny and then hold a lot of rain. And or, uh, tomorrow is going to be cold and then we're, very, we're, we're dying with heat. Have you noticed that? I don't believe the weather channel. I don't believe the newspapers. I don't watch them and I don't want to waste my life. Amen. Don't waste your life another minute. Hallelujah. So, they try to call us controversial to make us look bad. But let me, let me get your attention for all of you who are following this even on YouTube. Now, when you see an article against Christians because they're controversial, please copy and paste this article and place it there. So they will look really dummies when they say that Christians are controversial. Hello, that's our calling. Jesus is controversial. Thank you. Praise God. Thank you for the trophy. Amen? Amen? Hallelujah. <laughs> Amen. And I want to be controversial. Listen to this. How many of you want to be controversial? I know some of you are making you nervous tonight. Or this morning. Now guess what? Controversial means against the current. What about if I, I am not controversial? Then I'm against Christ. And what does against Christ make me? Anti-Christ. So you're either controversial against the current or you're against Christ. And now you're anti-Christ. And now you're in the anti-Christ system. No matter what, you're always against something. Either against the current of the world, and if you walk by faith, if you believe the Bible, and if you walk with Christ, you're going to be against the currents of the world, or else you're going to be against Christ, and that's not going to be a good ending for you. Amen? Hallelujah. So, say I'm honored to be called controversial, because my Lord and my Savior is controversial. Amen? This is my calling. 
If you're going along with the flow, with the current, it means you've died. You stopped living. When you die, you are carried away. That's why when somebody dies, they, we say, what, is, what do we say? They carried him away. If you belong to Jesus, if you believe the Bible, if you, if you say, I'm born again, if you say, do you know that, to be honest, today, as a Christian, you can be controversial, controversial if you say, I believe in divine healing. Well, you believe God heals? Yeah, God, my God is not outdated. He has not expired yet. He still heals people today. Amen. And I believe in casting out of demons. And I think about, I want to cast a demon out of you too. <laughs> you believe in the devil? Oh yeah, definitely. Yeah. Pastor Gordon believes in the devil. Yeah. If you believe the Bible, you must believe in the devil. <laughs> Amen. Now I believe he's defeated. <laughs> Amen. But yeah, he is real and he does exist. Hallelujah. Praise to Jesus. But our Lord and Savior conquered him on the cross. Amen. Glory to God. Do you know what? Those people who are called to make a difference, but instead making a difference, they're going against, they're against actually now against Christ. And they're going with the current. Do you know what God calls them? In Revelation chapter 21, 8, he calls them cowards. Do you know what the Bible says about cowards? That their, their part shall be in the lake of fire. Why do you think Jesus says, if you, he says to, his, to us, if you're ashamed of me in this wicked and perverse generation, I will also be ashamed of you when I come with my father in the clouds? Are you a coward because you're afraid to stand for the truth? So when we say, I believe the Bible, I believe in healing, I, divine in, I believe in divine healing, I believe in casting out of demons, I'm being controversial. The rest are going down the current, they're going down the pit, literally, just like the Bible says. Christians, I want to encourage you today, be what God calls you to be. And you know what you're going to be? Controversial against the current. Don't let demons carry you down. James 1, verse, chapter 1, 3. Knowing that the testing of your faith produces patience. Now listen, verse 4. Let patience have its perfect work. That you may be perfect or complete. Mature. Lacking nothing. Now listen to this. Are you realizing that this scripture is saying that when your faith is tested... Something good is happening to you. What is it doing? It's building you. It's making you stronger. It's making you more able to endure. You're gaining endurance. How many of you have ever been to the gym? Some of you need to go to the gym. And you've, you've lifted up weights. Anybody lifted up any weights? What do you do when you go? Do you go and lift up those things which you just like lift with one finger? I'm at the gym. I can imagine Mr. Bean doing that. Okay. Now, you go on the table and you put on some really heavy weights. Why? So that you will grow endurance in your muscles so then the result is your muscle is stronger after and it is bigger. So what has the enemy brought against you as a pressure? God turned it for your good to grow in patience, to grow in endurance, to grow in hope, to grow in faithfulness. And you will be a complete person lacking in nothing. So even what the enemy brings against you, the Lord turns it in your favor. Hallelujah. Because there's nothing that the devil can ever do that God cannot turn it around and you're good. Hallelujah. 
Thank you, Jesus. Amen. It's the truth. You see, let me ask you this question. How many of you have ever sat for a test and you passed? Let me, uh, uh, I, for how many of you failed? <laughs> then you had to do a reset. Now listen, when you are, when you set for the test, how many of you were happy with the test? With the test, you were happy? No, you were happy with the results. But guess what? The test came to prove you, to approve you. The test came so that you will be rewarded. So when your test, faith is being tested, what God is saying, I'm setting you up to be rewarded. So that your faith is tested and proven. Are you understanding this? So when I'm going through a test, it's a good thing. Now, after the test comes, the reward Amen, hallelujah. Let's continue to read in James 1. So, let patience have its perfect work, that you may be perfect, mature, and complete, lacking in nothing. You know what? Do you know what God is doing? He is helping you grow where you are mature, and now no good thing will you lack in your life. No good thing will you lack in your life. Say it. No good thing will I lack in my life. But I have to go to the test of my faith. You see, if any, if, when, if, when you look for somebody to help you, even in your walk with God, you don't want people to help you who have no clue what life is all about. Normally, you go to people who have been through the test. And they've come out. Shining and stronger and maturer and lacking in nothing. Do you see how even God is setting you up even in the midst of the test for good things to come your way? Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Now, one of the things that I do want to say to encourage you is that everything has a season, right? Do you know the Bible says that there's a, even a season and there's a time even for the evil day. There is even a time and a season for bad things to happen. I'm not saying that God necessarily wants them to happen. But what God is saying is that ages come and ages go. Bad things come and bad things go. Good things come too. And the things that come from God, they come and they remain because they are eternal. But the bad things, they have a season. That's why I love when it says, Jesus is the rock of ages. So in every age that you may be going through, in every age of humanity, many ages have come and gone. But Jesus remains forever because he's the rock of ages. He's above all the ages. Hallelujah. Glory! Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Praise you, Father. Say, I'm going up. I'm not going down the current. I'm going up in Jesus' name. My calling is to be controversial against the current. Amen. Satan tries to make you to give up. He may try to discourage you. How many of you have ever felt discouraged and you wanted to give up? 1,000 times in one day. You think that just because I'm a minister or a pastor, apostle, whatever, it doesn't mean that I never feel like I want to give up? Mercy. Out of the 10 times you've seen me here, half of them I didn't want to be here. I don't, I, some of the, most of the time I didn't want to come and see your face. I'm sorry. <laughs> now it has nothing to do with your face. Because you're all good looking, wonderful, gorgeous. No, it's because the enemy tries to discourage me. How many, you ever felt discouraged? It's like, I want to give up with this Christianity thing and I'm just going to let everything just carry me down. No. Being carried down is not nice. I don't want to end up in a heap of 
trash. There is a reward. And that's why we're called to press on forward. To grab hold. Everybody say grab hold. That which God has for me in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you, Lord. But every time you're, put, you're, you're pressing forward, guess what's happening? <coughs> Muscles are growing stronger. Stamina is growing stronger. You're becoming bolder. You're becoming sharper. You're becoming stronger. You understand? Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. God raised up many situations in life, not to destroy you, but to set you up and to strengthen you. And there's no one in the world that they don't know the story of David and Goliath. The story is not about Goliath. The story is about David. You see, you see when God wanted to raise up a mighty man of God and a leader in, in Israel, what did he do? He raised up Goliath. So actually, it's not that God raised up David to defeat Goliath, but God raised up Goliath to make David shine. The Goliath that has come against you, it has come to make you shine. It has come so that you will make a difference. It has come so that you will be lifted up so high so that people will look at you and they will testify you serve the true and living God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. So your, your Goliath in your life has come to make you shine. Everybody say it. My Goliath has come to make me shine in Jesus' name. Amen. And it's just a season. It's passing away. The test came to confirm that you're on the right path. To confirm that you're going up. You're growing stronger. You're going bolder. You're growing sharpen, sharpener. Sharp, sh sh more sharpened. It has come to strengthen you. Increase you in endurance. You, most of you know Romans 8.28. For we know that God causes all things to work together for good. For all those that are called by God and those who are called according to his purpose. Those who love God. Anybody love God? You're called according to his purpose. God is making all things to work together for your good. For, for his glory. For your good. No matter what has come against you, it only has come against you to make you shine brighter. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Lord. So I want to remind all you Christians, all brothers and sisters, leaders, if you're not controversial, that means against the current, you end up being against Christ. And yes, I want to be controversial because I don't want to be against Christ. Only a dummy, mindless, whatever, want to be against Christ. Amen? Hallelujah. It would have been better for you never to be born. And we know that our Jesus is controversial. We, and we see at historic events. Do you know many of the historic events that we look at in history? You know, unfortunately, because of the corrupt liberal militant media that we have around us, do you know how many stories that are around us and they have become a very famous and popular story because a Christian made a difference in it, but they removed the Christian part of it? Have you noticed that? Have you noticed that? For example, <coughs> there was a player recently, and uh, he, they, he won some, some trophy and became very popular, and he was praising Jesus. But the media removed what he said about Jesus, even his cap that says that Jesus Christ is Lord, he removed it, they removed it. Whatever teacher they had about, they removed it, they covered it. I, I, I'll tell you another thing. I, I, I have a friend of mine, he is one of here, somebody who invited them to, to be part of the program. And uh, in this program, they were going to have different artists, singers. And one of the, some of the artists were going to be singing like, like songs with blasphemy in them, with bad words in them. And our brother here, when, when they invited him, he said, well, we're not sure we want to have you in the program because you talk about Jesus. Thank God he pressed through. He pressed through. 
and he won the situation and he ended up being invited to that program. But the thing is that in that program, there were many speaking bad stuff. Sex, drugs, singing about these things. But what did they saw wrong? Singing about Jesus. Testifying about the Lord has done it. But thank God for our brother who pressed through and made a difference. He didn't say, I'm going to sit down. Okay, I'm going to accept it. It must be God's will. No, it's not God's will. It's the devil's will. God's will is for you to press on and fight. Amen. Hallelujah. <clears throat> Amen. <clears throat> Just like somebody, some years ago, I had a couple of leaders in Malta, and they're part of an evangelical church. Bless their darling hearts. One day they said to me, Pastor, brother, listen, let's just cool it down. You know, stop, stop, you know, stirring up things. Meaning, listen, just go along with the current. Go with the current, you know. You know, don't speak against these things. Don't speak against certain things. You know, just it's okay. This is the mentality of many leaders. How are we going to make a difference in the world if we go along with the, with the world? We're supposed to go and be a difference in the world. Light always opposes darkness. Amen? Hallelujah. Praise God. Thank you, Lord. In the book of Romans, in the book of Romans chapter 4, look at this quickly. Romans chapter 4. We're talking about our beloved father of faith, Abraham, Romans 4. Did you know that when, the, when they first landed on the moon, do you know what was the first thing that they did? Anybody knows? Did you know it was communion? Now, how many, how many of the history and documentary channels, you know, ever mentioned that? Isn't that interesting? But the first thing that actually that they did when they landed on the moon is have communion. Do you know how many stories are like that in history but they removed the Christian part of it. You know the devil knows that he only has a short time. The, the devil knows and his minions know that they are only for a season. Because only what God lasts will last forever. Only what the Lord does lasts forever. Romans chapter 4 from verse 16. You know our brother Abraham and our father in the faith. For if those who are of the law and are heirs, faith is made void and the promise made of no effect. Because the law brings about wrath, for there where there is no law, there is no transgression. Therefore it is of faith that it might be according to grace, so that the promise might be sure to all of the seed, not only to those who are of the law, but also to those who are of faith of Abraham. Now what kind of a faith Abraham did he have? Who is the father of us all? As it is written, I have made you a father of many nations in the presence of him whom he believed, God, who gives life to the dead and calls those things which do not exist as though they did. Who contrary to hope, in hope believed. Contrary against. Now what, what is, many of you know the story of Abraham. Abraham was old in age. His wife was old in age. He was promised uh, to have a child when everything went against the promise, everything went against what God told him. He could not have children. His wife could not bear children. And God says that he calls those things that be not as though they were. And God, because of his faith, God did not do something that was broken and he lit in him. But God did something in Abraham that was dead and resurrected it from the dead. You see, when your faith, the faith of Abraham, operates like the faith of our father in the faith, Abraham, what we have is, one, you're going to face trials. You're going to face opposition. 
everything you're coming against is going to tell you, you can't have it. You can't do it. It's impossible. Forget it. But what do we do? I'm called to press on. I'm called to continue to believe. To hold on to the promise of God. Amen. Verse 18. Who continued to hope and hope believed. So that he became the father of many nations. According to what was spoken. So shall your descendants be. And not being weak in faith. How could be for 25 years. He did not grow weak in faith. Some of us we gave up a week, late, a week later. Some of us we received the promise of God. We gave up one day later. For 25 years, Abraham did not become weak in faith. The I don't want to uh, uh, lengthen the story, but everything was against this man believed. Why do you think God, the Bible says, nothing is impossible to those who believe? Why do you think God, the Bible says in the book of um, Jeremiah, it says, he is the God of all flesh. Nothing is impossible with me, Jeremiah 32, 27. Because we have the kind of faith, we have been given the kind of faith. Listen, this is where our faith works best. Against the current. Your faith works best against the current. Your faith works best when everything is against you. Your faith works best when the doctor tells you you can't be healed. Your faith works best when the bank tells you you're broke. Your faith works best because that's where your faith is birth, is born and created to work. Against the current. Against what the world says. Against our senses. Your senses tell you you can't do it. It's impossible. This is not going to happen. But your faith rises up. The shield of faith rises up. And you say, well, my God said. My God said. It is written. Hallelujah. And when you do that, you'll be able to go against the current. Against the, what the world says. And you will get your miracle. And you will live with a mighty testimony in your life. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. In Hebrews 11, 6, the Bible says it's impossible to please God without faith. Amen. Brothers, when you endure various trials, and when you go through the testing of your faith, rejoice. Ah, now I understand why I must rejoice. Why do I rejoice now? Because it is when I'm going against the current that my faith is working the most. It's when I go against the current that my faith works best. My faith is not of this world. My faith is of heaven. It's the supernatural against the natural. Amen. It's the light against darkness. Amen. And even of, and, and you know what? This wonderful thing. When you find resistance, it means your faith is working. How many of you have found resistance? That means because you're making a difference. It's working. If it does not, if, if darkness does not resist you, most probably it's because you're going alongside it instead of against it. <laughs> I love that. It gives me encouragement. So when I have resistance, whoa, whoop, something is working. When somebody comes to discourage me, oh, I'm doing something good. When the enemy comes and I can't attack me, oh man, the enemy must have felt some punch there. And he just screamed. Hallelujah. Amen. And he uses one of his minions on Facebook to attack me. Hallelujah. Praise God. And then I love that wonderful magic button. Delete and block. Let them die with their own poison. Enjoy the drink. It's on the house. Your house. <laughs> Amen. Hallelujah. So when you have a need, provision, believe that, has already been made for you. You see, this, this really blessed me. Some time ago, not a not long time ago, the Lord encouraged me and brought it to my, my spirit. When I have a need, anyone has a need here? Do you know the fact that you have a need, it reveals that it's already provided for you. 
Because God never had a second thought. Can you imagine? God, the Father, the Son, they're having fellowship. They're having some English tea in the afternoon. You know. And all of a sudden, Jesus hears one of you screaming, Don't you know that I need a wife? Don't you know that I need a husband? Don't you know that I need a car? Don't you know that I need a refrigerator? <laughs> and Jesus was saying, Oh, Father! With the, did you know that this girl needed a refrigerator? Hey, hey, the Holy Ghost. Hey, Jesus, how come uh, uh, we forgot him? He's still single. No. Because the first, the fact you have a need, it's about this, is in that, it is that season that you're about to discover the promise. And that God has already provided for you. If you have a need, God's provision is already there. Your faith rises to meet that need. And that need is on the way to meet you. It may be your healing. It may be your spouse. Make sure it is not somebody else's spouse. <laughs> it may be your car. It may be your job. It may be your house. It may be your career. It may be your family. The, fir the fact you have a need. The faith of God inside of you has arisen to, my, to come and meet that need already provided ahead of time for you. Hallelujah. Praise Jesus. You should be rejoicing and, and giving thanks to God. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. So Abraham did not grow weak in faith. He did not consider his own body already now dead since he was about 100 years old. And the deadness of Sarah's womb. And he did not waver at the promise of God through unbelief. But strengthened, look. So where there was a position, what happened to Abraham? He became stronger. Ah, th th this is actually mind-boggling, to be honest with me. Practically what the Lord is teaching me and you is when you have um, testing of your faith, what God is doing is making you stronger. Look. Abraham grew stronger while he walked by faith and patience. Not he grew weaker. Well, pastor, I'm growing weaker. I'm about to give up. No, you don't realize you're getting stronger. Your faith is making you stronger. You're getting more endurance. You're raising up to the occasion. Hallelujah. Don't give up in Jesus' name. Amen. Your calling, your, your calling is to receive everything that God has for you. Every dream of God comes with opposition. Because God has in mind what he makes of you, not just what he gets to you. Did you hear that? Uh, whenever God gives you a dream, that dream will find a position. But God knows that. Because God is not just interested in what he gets to you, but he what makes out of you. In the process, he's transforming you. In the process, he's building me. In the process, he's building me in a mighty man of God. He's building in you a mighty woman of God. In the process, and he's building in you a mighty giant for to become a giant slayer in this age that we live in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. What you see is what you'll be. In 1 Timothy chapter 6, 12, Paul says, fight the good fight of faith. Grab hold. Grab hold. So, Fight the good fight of faith. It's a good fight. It's a positive fight. And how do you grab hold of the promises of God? Do not forsake the confession of your faith. What is the confession of my faith? The confession of my faith is, obviously, that Jesus Christ is my Lord and my Savior. I'm not going to give up. I'm going to go up. I'm not going to give in. Hallelujah. I am on my way up and I'm on my way to meet my promise. Amen. In Jesus' name. And my confession is of faith is that what God promised concerning my body, healing, health, what God has promised about my finances. God, do you know God says that he will give you all the desires of your heart if you believe? Whatsoever you desire when you pray, believe. Whatsoever you desire, whatsoever you desire. Do you have any desires? Obviously, I'm not telling you to desire things which are ungodly. 
I'm telling you things which God knows that they're desires of your heart. Whatever you desire when you pray, believe that you have received them and you shall have them. Amen. Blessed be the name of Jesus Christ. So faith works best. Everybody say it. Faith works best when there is resistance. Thank you, Lord. I'm not going to limit God. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to allow God to work in my life. I'm not going to look at the flesh. I'm not going to look at, look at the natural circumstances. I'm going to look at the promise. In the book of James, chapter 1, 22 to 25, it says practically these words. It says how the word is like a mirror. Look at this. The word, the word of God is like a mirror. Now, most of you looked at the mirror this morning when you came here. Anybody, did, everybody looked at the mirror this morning? How did you look? Did you like yourself? I like myself. And I said, man, you look good. Thank you. Hallelujah. <laughs> and when I looked at myself, guess whom I saw? I saw myself. <laughs> what did you think? I'm going to say I saw you. I saw myself. I saw myself cons what the mirror tells me, shows me. But guess what? When you look at the mirror of the word, guess what you see? You see what God shows you. When you look at the mirror of the word, you see the mirror on the wall, mirror, mirror on the wall, who's the most beautiful of us all? Hallelujah. <laughs> okay. When you look on the mirror on the wall, it gives you what you put in front of it. But when you put yourself in front of the mirror of the word, it gives you what God sees you. What does God see you as? Healed, blessed, valuable, powerful, anointed, chosen, special. With a mighty destiny of God. With a great purpose from heaven. A giant slayer. A controversial man and a woman of God. One who has not allowed himself or herself to be carried by the currents of the world. But one who has decided to press on toward the upward, upward goal of God in Christ Jesus. That's what the word of God tells me. That's the, what the mirror. You see, you need to spend time in front of the mirror of the word. Because the more you spend time in front of the mirror of the word, the more you become what the mirror shows you. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you, Lord. I'm going to finish with these statements. I'm going to tell you these statements. Whenever you have, wherever you have the strongest resistance, listen to this. Some of you need to write them down. Wherever you have the strongest resistance reveals where your anointing is working the most. Wherever you have the strongest resistance reveals where you are anointed, where you have been sent and anointed to demolish and to change. Your adversary reveals your assignment your adversary reveals your assignment you are struggling because the enemy has stood up to resist you because you are succeeding and some of you need to see to get these inside you are struggling because the enemy has stood up to resist you because he knows you are succeeding. Do you feel any resistance by the enemy? Keep pressing on. You're winning. You're winning. Amen. What the enemy sends against you to stop you, God will use it to promote you. What the enemy sends against you to stop you, God will use it to promote you. When we read about 
the hall of faith and all the men and women of God, Abraham, David, Joseph, Jeremiah. Look at the resistance that people had. But today we look at them as the patriarchs and the mighty men of old. Yesterday I said something and I want to say it to you today. You know, well, there are people in our life that we look up to and we admire. Kenneth Hagin, Smith Wigglesworth, um, Billy Graham, Catherine Kuhlman. Men and women of God that made a difference in our nation and the world. And we love to read about them. When are we going to read about you? When are we going to read about you? Which people, which generation is going to read about what you've done for God? Thank God for these wonderful, wonderful men and women of God. Today the Lord is saying to you, Satan is not working against you to stop you. But I, have, I am causing him to work for you so that you will shine and your purpose in this world will come to pass to glorify God. The enemy, yes, he comes. But it surely will come to pass too. He came to pass. He comes to pass. <laughs> Let him pass. Today you make a decision. I will not doubt the word of God. I will stand firm on the word of God. The word that is established in the heavens and will never change. Whatever the enemy has brought against me is temporary and it's going to come to pass. Whatever God has said is eternal, it will be established forever. So say this to yourself. I will not doubt the word of God. God's word is working in my life. And it will come to pass in my life that that what God has promised shall surely be accomplished in the mighty name of Jesus. If you have found resistance, I want to remind you. It's a reminder to you. You're alive and you're making a difference. And you're coming against the current. You are controversial. And that is your calling. That is my calling. And I'm honored in Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. Let's all stand. Let us all stand. Let's lift up our hand to the Lord. I trust that this message has blessed you. And more than ever, it has refocused you to know your calling. The devil, now this is not just a nice sentence, but the devil is literally afraid of you. He is afraid that you will succeed. Because if you succeed, the kingdom of darkness will suffer great damage. And it so shall be in Jesus' mighty name. And if you fall, if you mess up, rise up again. God is the God of second chances every second if you are in this place today and say to me pastor today I want to give my life to Jesus I don't want to go with the current anymore I don't want to be carried away with the current of this world anymore I'm tired I don't want to end up in a heap of trash and I certainly don't want to end up in hell God is building in you a mighty force that the enemy will not be able to withstand. If you are here today and say to me, Pastor, I want to accept Jesus Christ as my Lord and my Savior today. For the first time, I want to surrender truly my life to Jesus. I want to make him my Lord and my Savior. I'm not asking you to become religious. I'm not even asking you to join the church, this church. I'm asking you to give your life to Jesus Christ. 
Anybody here today for the first time, you want to do that? Lift up your hand. Anybody here for the first time, you want to give your life to Christ? Lift up your hand. Don't be ashamed. Don't be scared. Don't be embarrassed. Anybody here? I believe there are people that the Holy Spirit is tugging in your heart. Now, let me ask you a question. Be honest with yourself. If you die today, are you 100% sure you are saved? You are going to heaven. Your name is written in the Lamb's book of life. If you die today, you will be instantly in the presence of the Lord with Him in heaven. If you're not sure, you can be sure. Anybody wants to be sure today for the first time, lift up your hand. Don't be afraid. Praise God. One. Anybody else? Anybody else? Two. Thank you, Lord. There are others. I believe there are at least two more. Who else? Who else? Who else? What else? Come on. Don't be ashamed. Ask the people around, uh, near you. If there are new people, say, are you sure you're saved? Are you sure you're going to go to heaven? Are you sure? Are you sure? Those of you who lifted up your hands, I knew. Those of you who lifted up your hand, or you should have lifted up your hand, and you on YouTube, Facebook, TV, say this prayer with me. Close your eyes. The Lord loves you. But I, this is your opportunity to make things right with God. Jesus will forgive you all your sins. No matter what you've done, it doesn't matter what you've done. It doesn't matter. He loves you with an everlasting love. Say this prayer with me, okay? He knows your pain. He knows your brokenness. And you are not here or you're not listening to this message by chance or coincidence. Close your eyes. Put one hand on your heart and say this prayer with me. Say, Heavenly Father, I want to thank you. Thank you for your love. Thank you for your mercy. Jesus, I don't want to be carried away by the current of this world. I want to be yours, Lord. Save me. Because in the currents of this world, I'm drowning. Save me, O oh God. Heal me, Lord Jesus. Forgive me of all my sins. Wash me clean by your precious blood. Jesus, I believe in you that you are the son of the living God. That you died for me on the cross. But on the third day, you rose again victoriously. Conquering sin, death, and the grave. And the devil. Jesus, come into my heart right now. Fill me with your presence. Fill me with your love and your peace. And use me from now on for your glory. I want to know you, Lord. I want to serve you, Jesus. I want to follow you with all of my heart. Give me the strength to be the person you've called me. But at least I know for sure that you are with me. I give you praise, O oh God. I give you glory. In Jesus' mighty name. If you said that prayer today, those of you present and those of you YouTube and TV or Facebook, today you are saved. You're no longer going to hell. Now that alone should make you crazy drunk and happy. Because it means you're no longer going to hell. Hell has no longer any right over your life. Today, all the angels in heaven are having a party over you. Hallelujah. They're rejoicing. They are proclaiming you. They're proclaiming you in heaven. Jesus is proclaiming you with the Father right now. Jesus said, if you believe in me and confess me publicly, I will confess you in heaven. Right now, he's talking about you. Jesus is talking about you in heaven right now. Hallelujah. If you're on YouTube and you've done that, you've said that prayer from your heart. If you're in Malta, come and join us every Wednesday and Saturday at 7 p.m. and Sunday morning at 10 a.m. Be with us for the Faith Explosion Conference, which is starting on the 31st of this month till the 4th of September. Faith Explosion. Team is faith that overcomes the world. We're going to have many 
speakers, over 25 preachers, teachers, apostles, prophets, apostles, pastors, ministers of the gospel. And today, if you have made that decision to follow Christ, start reading the Bible. You must read the Bible. That's how you're going to grow. Talk to the Lord in your prayer every day. Thank Him, praise Him. Talk to Him, your need. Okay? And the third one is make sure that you, if you're not in Malta, if you're in another country, find a good Bible teaching Holy Spirit church. If you're in Malta, come and join us here. So it's important you must go to church, to a good Bible teaching church. Not where they teach men's traditions, but where they teach the Word of God. Amen. Hallelujah. Brothers and sisters,